Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, glory, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it, hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord God Almighty for yet another day and for what the Lord has done. Had it not been the Lord God Almighty who was on our side, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord for bringing us yet today once again as we were not able to make it last week due to technical difficulties but blessed be the name of the lord for making a way today hallelujah somebody uh once again i bring you greetings from the holy mountains of the lord god almighty and i pray and hope that it is well with your soul and it is well with your household and i pray that the lord continue to show his face upon you and the mercies of the lord are bound for you in all thy ways hallelujah somebody once again you are welcome and you are watching live from traveling multimedia and this is traveling radio god bless you for connecting and trusting that the lord is going to show up and that we are going to experience a wonderful time in the presence of the lord even as we dive into the word of god and we see some powerful teachings and today we are still on the journey my our daily walk with god hallelujah uh, daily work with God is still on the journey. And today I want to speak and uh, 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 teach us today on uh, the subtopic, brokenness. Hallelujah. Brokenness. Brokenness. We want to speak today on brokenness, what brokenness is all about. And this is coming from a popular verse or a chapter in the Bible that you may have heard before or may not have heard before. But how be uh, we are trusting that the Spirit of the Lord is going to expose and reveal some revelation and knowledge to us so that we can be better people in our daily work with God. Because at the end of the day, it is all about our daily work with God. How can how we can maximize the potentials, how we can uh, uh, maximize our 
relationship with God on daily basis. Hallelujah. Even as we seek to better ourselves in our relationship with our partners, uh, we also do not want to neglect our relationship with God. Hallelujah. The Bible said, build this building your most holy faith. And so in order for everything to fall in line, everything needs to fall in line first with God. And so if everything falls in line with God, then trust you me, everything else is going to fall right back in their respective places. And so we trust that the Lord is going to be with us. And before we go, I just want to share a short word of prayer with you. And so Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, the I am that I am, the unchangeable changer, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Elohim, the ancient of days, the bride of morning star, you that speak and no one questions, you that opens and no one shut, you have made a way for us to be here once again today. And even as we have guarded under your holy tabernacle, we pray this day that may you reach out to us, touch every heart of God, break every heart in heart, melt every heart in heart. Your word said that for the word is like a hammer that break a rock into pieces. We are breaking every heart in heart right now into pieces by the word of God. And the word that is sharper than any two edges so piercing through to the dividing of spirit and soul. I pray that let your word reach and touch your people's life right now in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, people of God. Uh, you are all welcome once again. You are all warmly welcome once again to our to this version of uh, our daily walk with God. Once again, this is traveling hour and God bless you. Hallelujah. And so without much ado, I, want, I just want us to jump into the word of God. Uh, if you have your Bible with you, kindly open with me to the book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. Hallelujah. The book of Jeremiah, the chapter number eight, the chapter number 18 is in, uh, I beg your pardon, the chapter number 18, from the verse number one through the six, hallelujah. Uh, Evelyn, uh, we are happy to be back, we are happy to be back, good evening to you, and we welcome you also back. Uh, good evening, people of God, Maud, uh, good evening to you, God bless you wherever you are. Uh, you need you, amen and amen, God bless you for joining, God bless you for connecting. Hallelujah. So if you have your Bible with you, kindly open to the book of uh, Jeremiah, the chapter number 18, the verse number 1 through to 6. Jeremiah 18, 1 through to 6. And I'm trusting that the Lord is going to come through today. Hallelujah. And he said, verse 1, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was made in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, and it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And so this was a short word. Uh, let's call it a prophecy or a message that the Lord wanted to deliver, but a prophetic message that was meant to be given to uh, the prophet of God, Jeremiah. Uh, if you know the history of Jeremiah, you will understand the type of a person that Jeremiah was. Jeremiah was no ordinary prophet as the prophet of the Old Testament. Uh, there were categories of types of prophet, major prophet and minor prophet, and Jeremiah happened to be one of the major, major prophets in the Bible in his dealing with God and the people of God. And so he was more of an emotional prophet. Uh, you can call Jeremiah a cancer baby. Hallelujah. Jeremiah was a crying prophet. He was a crying baby. He was very, very emotional. or He was an emotional prophet that based solely his uh, uh, dispensation of the word on uh, 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 visions, because he being a prophet, visions 
meant so much to him and God knowing who he was, God dealt with Jeremiah in the aspect of his life or in portraying to who he was in the way that he could understand the word that he was trying to deliver to Jeremiah. Hallelujah. And so that will let you understand that God deals with every one of us in a way that we will understand. Hallelujah. Uh, just a sec. Let me. Apologize for that. I had to adjust the uh, the computer very well. Uh, so, so Jeremiah being an emotional person and how God was dealing with Jeremiah was based solely on his strength and his weaknesses. And so God needed to deal with the weaknesses of Jeremiah. And so uh, as time goes on, we're going to deal with who is your friend because it got to a point in Jeremiah's life that Jeremiah felt that God deceived him. He felt that God lied to him. God has betrayed his trust because he being an emotional person, he went to God in anger and had to exchange some few words with God. And so God knew that Jeremiah was an emotional person. He never hide his feeling. Whatever comes his mind, he speak just as it is. He never covers or try to sugarcoat anything. And so by this, uh, most of the, the kings during his era hated him. They didn't want to have nothing to do with Jeremiah because they think that he prophesies against them. He, 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 he's not a people pleaser. He doesn't say it in such a way that you will feel comfortable because at the end of the day, the truth is the truth and the truth hurt. And there is no way you, you, you're going to call the truth or call a spade a fork. And so a spade is called a spade. That, that is who Jeremiah was. And so God needed to work on Jeremiah. And so God uh, uh, took his time to break Jeremiah. Hallelujah. God needed to work on the brokenness of Jeremiah and to remove Jeremiah without his knowledge, without him knowing how God was really working on him. And so the Bible said there came a time that the Lord God wanted to deliver a message to the people of Israel. But knowing who Jeremiah was, the way that he understand things and the way he deal with situation, the Bible said, and God said unto him, get up and go to the potter's house, for there I will give you a word. Hallelujah. I, I don't know if God was trying to say that Jeremiah cannot sit in his house or wherever Jeremiah was so that he can deliver the same word to him. But Jeremiah being a visual person for a better understanding, God needed to take Jeremiah from his comfort zone and bring him to a place when he could visualize understanding the word. And so sometimes you need to visualize the word of God. And so for Jeremiah to have a clear vision and a clear understanding of the word of God, he need to visualize the word of God, not just to hear the word, because it was not just a message that he could comprehend just by hearing. Hallelujah. It was a message that he needed to see. And so God said, get up and go to the potter's house, for I have a word prepared for you so that a word that I'm about to deliver, you will see the word and you will hear the word so you can comprehend so that when you are delivering the word to the intended recipient, you will know how to go about the word. Hallelujah. Because you are receiving the first hand of the message. This is a message that is not copied. It is not a message you are hearing another prophet preach. It is not a message you're hearing another pastor preach, but it is a word that I am dropping into your spirit that you need to see the word to understand the word. And so, beloved, sometimes hearing the word alone is not enough. 
you must be able to see and understand the word. And that is the point where you know you have caught a glimpse of the revelation. And that the Greek called the rima, because it is the spoken word of God to you, not the logos that you are reading, not the Bible that you are reading. Because when you take the Bible and you read, the way you're going to understand and explain will be different from my understanding and explanation. But one thing stands for sure that when God delivers a word into your spirit, it is a word that stays with you. And you don't need to go back and make references to the word of God because it is already a word that has been deposited into your spirit. And so in order for Jeremiah to understand comprehensively the intention of God and the reason why he needed to go to the potter's house was for a message of brokenness. But God knew and understood the lifestyle and the perception, the ways of Jeremiah. And God knew that there was no way that Jeremiah was going to comprehend the word. He may miss the mark. He may miss the, 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 the ulterior and uh, 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 what's the word for lack of better way. He will miss the, the original intention of the word and what the word was actually meant to be because the more you understand the better you become so when you understand the word of god it doesn't matter how it is placed in front of you you are able to digest and explain because it was a direct message now in communication i happen to do a business communication in the college uh, in marketing, and there is something we call grapevine information, and not just uh, uh, a sort of rumor or gossip information, but grapevine information is when the information is coming from the top to the bottom. But before that information gets to the bottom, it has already been twisted. It has lost the relevance, the importance, the important information embedded in that message. And so the longer the vine, the longer the, the message takes to reach the intended party, you may end up losing exactly what the person or who the person is sending the information won't tell you to hear. It is just like when someone wanted to tell you, so we call it a reported speech. And so when you're making a speech or you're delivering a message, your message is not a direct message. You are making a reported speech. It is something and information someone gave you so you could go and give somebody else because you are a messenger being sent to deliver a message. Now, depend on the number of people through whom this information passes. Let's say, a, 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 what's, what you call it? A company wanted to send up information to a messenger or to somebody in the company. And so everybody, by the time it reaches your turn, so the boss said, when you go to the post office, make sure you get a stand once you post the letter. Now, by the time the information gets to the intended person, what you hear the person saying is that the boss said, when you get to the post office, post this letter because he or she has not received the full information, missing down, which says that when you get there, don't just post, but also get a sticker. Hallelujah. And so when we are dealing with God on an individual basis, God in his own infinite understanding was dealing with Jeremiah on his weaknesses because Je God was not dealing with Jeremiah on his strength because Jeremiah already understood, God already understood and know the strength of Jeremiah. But that which was so much of a concern to God was Jeremiah's uh, physical disability or his emotional disability, which was his weakness. Hallelujah. And so until you are broken, there is no humbleness. Now, we are talking about brokenness, and somebody will say, what is brokenness? What is he talking about? Now, we are talking about brokenness. The Bible said, when Jeremiah got to the potter's house, he saw the potter and the clay of a vessel in the potter's arm. The potter was holding or making a vessel. Now, the Bible said, Jeremiah got there when the potter was in the process of making a vessel. Now, that aside, the Bible said, now continue, the vessel was broken in the hand of the porter. Hallelujah. The vessel that the man was making or the porter was making got broken. Now, so what Jeremiah witnessed was not the starting point of the process. Jeremiah got there to witness a broken vessel in the hand of the porter. Hallelujah. Now, 
for for the Bible said now the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my word. Hallelujah. There I will cause you to hear my word. And now then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel, at the vessel, and the vessel that he made of the clay was broken in his hand. Now, the Bible says Jeremiah got there not from the onset. He didn't see how the potter mixed the clay. He didn't see the type of clay that the potter was needing. What Jeremiah witnessed was a broken vessel in the hand of the potter. And that was the message that God was trying to pass along to Jeremiah. Now, when Jeremiah witnessed the broken vessel in the hand of the potter, Jeremiah said, now, according to the word of the Lord and according to the Bible, he said, and now the broken vessel seemed displeased in the eyes of the potter because that is not the vessel he tried to make. Now, the potter did not break the vessel. The vessel that the potter was making, the potter, did not break the vessel, which means the potter was not needing the pot with intention of breaking the vessel. Jeremiah witnessed a broken vessel in the hand of the potter, in the process of the potter making the clay. Now, in the process, um, excuse me, in the process of the potter making the vessel, now, it was not the kind of vessel that he intended or it was not the finished product or the outcome he was expecting for the vessel. And so when the vessel got broken in the head of the potter, the Bible said he's mercy and he remade it again. Now, that is the message that God wanted Jeremiah to catch. That was a revelation. The reason why Jeremiah had to leave his house to go to the potter's house was to one, witness a broken vessel in the hand of the potter and two, to witness the process of remaking a broken vessel into an intended vessel. Now, and after Jeremiah witnessed the broken vessel and the remake of the broken vessel, now the word of God came to Jeremiah. Now, he said in the verse 5, then the word of the Lord came to me after he witnessed what God wanted him to see. Hallelujah. Now, that was a short period or the short process that God wanted Jeremiah to witness. He wanted him to see so he could deliver a word into his spirit. And so he said, then after all this, after experiencing these two episodes, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, all house of Israel, can I not do to you as this potter? As simple as that. Can I not do to you as this potter? Now, what has the potter done that God wanted Jeremiah to see and to go and deliver to the people of Israel? Now, the message of God to Jeremiah was concise, precise, and very, very succinct. Now, how Jeremiah was going to present the word is all his business. And that is none of God's business. Hallelujah. God wanted Jeremiah to understand the message that he wanted him to see or the message he wanted him to pass across. And so when Jeremiah was experiencing the episode of the word of God, the Bible said after he witnessed the broken vessel in the hand of the potter, and the potter turned that broken vessel into the original and the intended vessel. Now, after that, the word of God came. He said, now, the only word that came to Jeremiah from God is that, can I not do to Israel as this potter? It's as simple as that. Can I not do to Israel as this potter? Now, God is not saying that I will break the people of Israel as the potter has broken this vessel. No, because that was not the word. Because the, the, the potter did not break the vessel. The potter did not break the vessel. In the process of the vessel being in the hand of the potter, and because of the, 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 the technicalities, the pressure, and, 
and, and how how you know uh uh, uh how the, the intention of the border and how he really want the the, the clay to come out, the vessel to come out, it couldn't take the pressure and so it breaks. It is not the porter that break the vessel. The vessel got broken in the process of it being made. And so what Jeremiah witnessed was a broken vessel. And now the vessel being made into another vessel by the porter. And that's the message of God to Jeremiah, to the people of Israel. He said that even as you are, I have not broken you, but you are broken. You, the people of Israel, you, my people, you are broken. But there is a chance and there is a way out. I can amend you, I can unbreak you, and I can remake you into a, a vessel of honor. Because the Bible says, so when you go to the house of God, there are different vessels, some unto honor and some unto dishonor. There are types of them with value. There are some that are made of clay. There are some that are made of wood. There are some that are made of paper. And there are some that are made of fire. There are some that are made of silver. And there are some that are made of gold. But all these vessels are going to go through the fire. And however you come out, that determines your value. Now, this vessel in the hand of the porter was going through the fire, the process of it being made. But because it is not a vessel of honor, it got broken. And so the porter has to break it and remold it again into a shape and a design and a vessel that he desires. And so just like that, many of us are like broken vessels walking about. Now, when you are a broken vessel, you are wounded. When you are a broken vessel, you walk about with sense of entitlement. When you are a broken vessel, you walk about with excuses. When you are a broken vessel, you walk about feeling jealousy, anger. You, you, you feel bitter about so many things. You are jealous. You are envy. When you are a broken vessel, you are just a walking time bomb because anything just pisses you off. Why? Because you are not complete. You are a broken vessel in the house of God. But listen, a broken vessel cannot be used in the house of God. A broken vessel is a useless vessel in the house. That vessel that is broken has to be remolded again because there is nothing useful for you as a broken vessel. You can use a broken cup to drink water. You can use a broken plate to eat from. A broken vessel is a broken vessel. And most of us Christians are walking about and we are broken. Even though we are in the house of God, thinking we are Christians, we are broken vessels. We are broken vessels. But we don't realize how broken we are when things begin to hurt, when things begin to get to us, when we begin to go about blaming everyone else for our inability to achieve the things that we want to achieve in life. When you are able to take somebody's inability and put it on yourself, when you are able to let other people change who you are, when you let people's negativity and negative vibe gets to you to change you to transform you into who you are but that is not who you are but as time goes on one thing that you must understand the bible says, as iron sharpens iron so man sharpens the countenance of his brother when you let things begin to rub off you you become broken and because you are a broken vessel you lose honor there is nothing that you can do to please god because you are a vessel unto dishonor you are not a vessel of honor and so, but when you are broken, it is a state of humbleness. A broken vessel experiences a state of humbleness. Because it is a time where your weaknesses and your flaws and your vulnerability have been exposed. Oh, you are not all that. So even aside all this, this is who you are. Even after all this boasting, we come to see you, this is who you are. That is the state of your vulnerability. That is a state of humbleness. And so when you are broken, you are humble because you are of no use. And when you are of no use, you humble yourself. 
Listen, most of us are able to humble ourselves, not because we are broken, but because of some inability on our part that when you are not capable of doing something, it humbles you. When you are not able to get something, it humbles you. When you become dependent on somebody, it humbles you. It is the only time you are humble. It is the only time you see your humility. But once you realize that you are not really a humble person, it's when you have everything at your back and core and the peace that you are able to do. It is there that you realize that you are an unbroken vessel. You were not humbled by being a broken vessel, but you are being humbled by situations and limitations on your side. That the things that you cannot do, the things that you cannot get, are the things that are humbling you. But once you are able to get the things that you wish and you want, you see how unhumble you are. But one thing that you must understand, that a broken vessel in the state of humbleness is working towards a period of rising and a liftage. Because there is a rising and a lifting for a broken vessel. Because once a broken vessel is humbled, the Bible says for promotion coming on from the south, the west, or the east, but promotion coming from abroad. But the Bible said that God gives grace to the humble, but the pride he humbles. And so once you begin to humble yourself, by virtue of your brokenness, there is a chance and there is a possibility that God is coming through to rise you up and to cause and lift us in your life. But listen, somebody, there is no rising for him that is already risen. There is no uplifting for him that is already on the top. There is no lifting for him that has already resurrected himself. But the Bible says, see and behold, there is a rising and I see, behold, that the sun rising beyond the horizon. And so listen to me, somebody, in your state of brokenness, you shouldn't be ashamed of yourself. In your state of brokenness, you know that lost ones, once you are humbled and you are broken, there is a rising and there is a lift. And listen, but before you can pass through the hand of God, you got to be broken. Because that is the message that God wanted Jeremiah to pass on to the people of Israel. He said that I am your God and you are my people. But the only way that you can go over to the other side of victory is when you pass through my hand. And there is no way you can pass through my hand without being broken. Because come to me as you are. Listen, it doesn't matter how broken you are, but come to me just as you are. Because by the time I'm finished dealing with you, you're going to be a vessel of honor unto me, but not unto you. Because the reason for this brokenness is that at the end of the day, we become a vessel of honor unto God, but not unto us. And so the Bible said, not unto us, oh God, not unto us, but for your name's sake, give glory. And so by the time you finish spending time with God. You don't become a broken vessel. You become a, a, more, a remolded vessel. Hallelujah. Now, most of us are in the process of being broken. And most of us are with God. And we are waiting to be refined, but we are not broken. Listen, it takes a broken vessel to pass through the hand of God. When you pass through the hand of God as a broken vessel, you are well assured that the Lord is going to break you. The Lord is going to remold you. And so what God wanted Jeremiah to witness was a broken vessel in the hand of the porter. And how it took time for the porter to remold such a broken vessel. And so you must understand the process that you are going through in life. That it doesn't matter. The Bible said, listen, even though your beginning may be small, the end shall be great. Why? Because you understand and you appreciate your early and your lowly beginning. Listen, your lowly beginning is a humble beginning, as another version will say. He said, do not despise your humble beginning. Because in your humbleness is a state you are most vulnerable. That anybody can look down on you. Anyone can talk to you anyhow. When you are humble, when you are low, when you are down, when you have been relegated to the background, it is a state that everybody else can look down on you. Everyone can see you and walk past right in. Because there is nothing that you can offer them. Anybody will look at you and say, who are you? But by the time the Lord finish dealing with you, they come and they ask, how are you? It is then that you see people coming out from the nook and cranny trying to pull out 
picture that you have taken with them before so they can prove that they knew you when you began. But one thing that I'm telling you today, that it doesn't matter how you are beginning. It doesn't matter your lonely beginning. It doesn't matter your humble beginning. One thing you got to understand is that you must stay broken so that the Lord can remold you. Listen, Jeremiah stood at the hand of God and when the Lord finished dealing with Jeremiah, Jeremiah came out to be a different type of person. He said, God, you have deceived me and I was deceived because this is not who I am. When I met you, I have changed completely. Now I am able to give my food to the government. I am able to give everything that I have to people that don't mean anything to me. But I am at a state where all that I have, I give up without even thinking, God, you have changed me and I don't like the person I am beginning to be because I have money. But now my bank account is empty because I empty my bank account to help the poor and the needy. I don't even care about the clothes I wear anymore. I am wearing a tattered coat. God, you have deceived me because when you called me, you told me that before I was so in my mother's womb, you knew me and you called me as a prophet and you ordained me as a nation prophet. But look at me now. I have nothing to boast of. God, you deceived me and I have been deceived. It was a period that God was dealing with the brokenness of Jeremiah. Jeremiah had to be broken for him to understand the process of remolding. Now, when God said to Jeremiah, go to the potter's house, that I will speak a word into your spirit. Now, something that I did with you without your knowledge, that I have remolded you, Jeremiah, you could not speak but now you are speaking. From your mother's womb, I delivered the word into your spirit. I dropped the word and you are able to see things that people do not have even a glimpse of. You are able to speak into existence as though they were, but that was my portion. But today here you are questioning me because it got to a point where Jeremiah had to come call. He said, hey, I know for sure that when I have to go into court with you and to sit at judgment you will prevail over me there is nothing i jeremiah will say that you god will change but nevertheless i will speak my mind anyway i know it is not going to change the situation but god i want you to shut up and listen to what i am about to say because i am at the verge of exploding i don't care what happens to me anymore i will speak my mind and jeremiah begin to make the complaint he begin to say things that he didn't know. He began to say things. And God said, enough, Jeremiah. You have said your peace. Now shut up and let me say my peace. I have sat down and listened to your nagging and complaint. It is about time I let you understand that I was taking you through a process and a process of a remodeling. Now, if you are running a race with the footmen and they worry you, how can you race with horsemen? Because I am preparing you to race with horsemen. But I have placed you in the midst of your own family that you cannot even deal with the pressure of your family and you are nagging and complaining. What are you going to do if I bring you into the tribe of the Egyptian, into the camp of your enemy? How will you speak? How are you going to do in the swellings of the Jordan? But I am in the process of remolding you and turning you into a place and a person of vessel of honor unto myself. And so this is the message I am giving to you, Jeremiah. Go and deliver it to the people of Israel. God bless you, woman of God. I see you, mommy, Patricia Pia. I, I, I'm so I'm so honored to have you. Hallelujah. It's always an honor to have a great woman of God on the platform. I'm so, so honored. And I'm so, so very humbled by your presence. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, so the Lord said unto Jeremiah that this is the word that I want you to hear and give to the people of Israel. And as I said, in your state or in your period of brokenness is your state of humbleness. Listen, if you only have one cloth to wear for the week, it is a state of humbleness. Listen, when you only have one, excuse me to say, draws to wear for two days or one week, when you come back from school or church or work, you go wash the underpants. Dry it up 
and tomorrow you have a fresh underpants to wear. Listen, when you are going through a period of brokenness, make sure you endure the process. Listen, when you do not understand the process of brokenness, and you are soliciting for help. Listen, I'm not saying you shouldn't go for help, but you should understand that sometimes you're seeking an attention for help impede the smooth process of God's divine orchestration in your life. I'll repeat that again. When the Lord is breaking you and remolding you, make sure you understand the process. It's all about your daily walk with God. When you are working with God, you should be able to be in tune to the Spirit of God. Because the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so until you are led by the Spirit of God, you have not graduated from whatever or whoever you are to becoming a child of God. It is as simple as that. When you are being led by the Spirit, when you are hearing the audible voice of the Spirit of God, when the Spirit is ministering to you, you know that, yes, now you are a child of God. There is no two other ways for you to find out if you are a child of God or not. There is only one way. And that's what the Bible says explicitly. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, or they are the children of God. I'm not going to say sons of God and somebody say, what about we, the daughters? Hallelujah. And that's what the Bible said. Sons just uh, is inclusive of male, females, everybody. Hallelujah. And so as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. So until you are led by the Spirit, you are not a child of God. Why? Because the Bible said the Spirit bear witness. Because you are a spirit. You have a spirit in you. And your spirit must bear witness with the spirit of God. Because that is, that, that is another side of God. And that is a, an exposure and a, a relationship that you have. When you have a relationship with God, you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so that's why the Bible said, And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You cannot have a fellowship with God. You can't have a fellowship with God. You can only have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And that is what the Lord Jesus promised and left behind when he left. He said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I'm going to leave the comforter. I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit. That will be with you. That will teach you. That will remind you of all the things that I taught you. Hallelujah. And so when you are in the process of brokenness, you are in the state of vulnerability. Anyone at all can look down on you because of what they have. Now, when you are in the process of brokenness, one thing, one sign is that people, it's not a sin. They begin to devalue who you are or they de-appreciate who you are. It is because now God needs to humble you even in the presence of everyone. Hallelujah. When people do not believe in you or do not take you for who you are, or do, listen, people will deal with you because of what they see today. Listen, but a child of God that is led by the Spirit, that is in tune to the Spirit, you are able to see beyond today. You see into tomorrow what is about to happen. And so people deal with you on the basis of what they are able to see. And they say, oh, this is all that you are able to offer. And so if this is all that you are able to offer today, I don't know what you are going to be able to offer tomorrow. And so I'm just going to deal with you on what I can see you provide today. And so little did they know that, yes, they may know your yesterday and your today, but they don't know your tomorrow. But one thing that is promised and sure is that when the Lord is dealing with you, the Lord is in the process of remolding you because you are a broken vessel. But listen, there is only one way that the Lord can remold you. There is no way the Lord is going to remold a vessel that is not broken. I'm going to repeat that again. There is no way the Lord God is going to remold a vessel that is not broken. He can only remold a vessel that is broken. Now, the process and the intention of the remolding is that you are put into a different shape. 
that will serve a purpose. And so until the Lord remold you, redesign you into a shape that will serve his purpose, you cannot be broken because you, you cannot be remolded because you are unbroken. And that is the issue with most of us thinking we are all righteous, all holy, all knowing that no one can teach us anything. No one can tell us nothing. We cannot be corrected. When the Bible said that it is only the fool that think that there is no correction. It is only the fool that hates correction. Whenever you hate correction, you are not in a problem because you are not broken. But when you are a broken vessel, now, you are in a state of humbleness. You don't see yourself above anybody else or above teachers. You don't see yourself unteachable. You don't see yourself unrebukable. Now, so what God was telling Jeremiah is that now, this Israel or Israelites, the people of Israel, are already broken. Now, because of the process of time and the things that they pass through, they are broken. And so they say, can the Lord come to our aid? Can the Lord help us? Can he even atone for our sins? And so all this cry has heard or has inclined to the Lord. And so that was the reason why God called Jeremiah to give him the word, to go and deliver to them. Hallelujah. And so when the Lord gave the word to the people, or when the Lord gave the word to the Israelites through Jeremiah, he said, these people are broken. Can I? Because what you witnessed was a broken vessel in the hand of the potter. You witnessed a broken vessel, and you also witnessed the vessel being turned into another and a new vessel by the potter. He says, now, this is how the people of Israel are in my hand. They are like clay in my hand. And they are like broken vessels in the hand of the potter. Just as you have witnessed, that is who they are to me. And that is their current state. And so all this cry and you know, all this cry and prayers and shouting and screaming is not going to change anything because these people are fasting and they are putting on sackcloth. Listen, tell them to eat because this fasting is useless. It is not serving the purpose. The reason why they're not seeing the answers to their prayer is that they are praying amiss. I am not asking their sacrifices. I am not asking for their prayers. I am not asking. I am only asking for their brokenness and their humbleness. And let them know that I am capable of remolding them because they are already broken. Listen, you must be in tune to the spirit of God. The reason why most of the time our prayers are not answered because we are praying on means. Listen, when you are being directed by the spirit of prayer, when you are in tune to pray, you don't pray five hours, you don't pray ten hours. When you are seeking something from God. Now, praying five hours, ten hours, those are engaging in other spiritual aspects. But when you are in tune to the spirit of God, the Lord already dug deep into your spirit what you know and what you need to do. So you don't spend hours praying about something you know nothing about or how to go about it. Hallelujah. And so when the Lord drops into your spirit something to pray about, you know exactly what you are praying about. So you go straight to the point. You don't spend hours praying about something you already know. You don't spend hours praying already about something you have a glimpse about. Hallelujah. Because it doesn't matter how many hours you pray. The Lord Jesus, he's still going to do it anyway because of your faith and relationship with God. Hallelujah. And so when you read on, there are different things. And the Bible said that, now, when, when all this happened, I will forgive their sins. I will overlook their mistakes because they are broken. In their humbleness, I will have mercy on them. In their humbleness, I will forget about all their iniquities. I will blot it away. I will wipe away their iniquities. Hallelujah. I was telling a friend the other day, we're having a conversation, and I was telling her that, you know, uh, uh, one thing that, uh, uh, Christianity in our time, or most of us uh, Christians do not understand, is that God deals with us on individual basis. God doesn't deal with us as a group because we are uh, 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 a church or we are a family, so God is going to deal with us in group. 
It doesn't matter the church you go. Maybe you are going to Traveling Light Chapel International. And so when God, when God is dealing with you, the Lord is going to deal with you the same way he's dealing with that brother or that sister in the same church. No. God deals with us on an individual basis. Hallelujah. God knows your strength and your weaknesses. He knows your capability and your incapability. But he wants to deal with you on an individual basis. And so uh, we, we, we were seeing something from the Bible and we made a reference to even the life of uh, David. Hallelujah. And so, first of all, when the Lord gave a commandment to Moses to tell the people of Israel not to intermarry from the Jordan or from the tribes around them, they should marry their own people because the other people, the Gentiles, are idol worshippers. They are pagans and they will corrupt them. They should marry themselves. They should marry among themselves. They should not give their daughters house or let their sons go out and marry. That's what the Lord said unto Moses to tell the people of Israel. But Moses went ahead and do exactly opposite what he told the people not to do. He went ahead and married from outside. And when the brother Aaron and the sister Miriam spoke against him, the Lord struck them. The Lord struck them. He said, it is not in your place. It's not your judgment. Because he is my son. He is a man of God. He is your leader. Even though he said, don't do this, doesn't mean you should go and do when you see him do it. Or even when he said you shouldn't do it and you see him do it, what he tells you not to do doesn't give you the authority to question him. And so you must understand and know Things that you speak against, especially when it comes to the issue of men of God that have a covenant with God. You may not know what the future holds for you. God was dealing with them, not as a whole, but as individual. And so even though someone, God, did, you know, cursed others and struck them with leprosy, even just was speaking against what Moses did, not even them going to do what Moses warned them. Moses did what he said them not to do. It's not as if they went ahead to do the same thing. They just spoke against it. They just went to question Moses and God struck them. David went about taking other people's wives and killing them on top of it. And yes, God said, he is a man after my heart. Because more, because David was dealing with God on individual basis. Because there is an account saying that He said when someone was worshipping God, someone you were not standing there. So when someone was having a relationship with God, you were not there. You don't know the deal between that person and God. You don't know the covenant between that person and God. So you should be very careful the things you speak against and the things you speak about when you know nothing about it, especially when it comes to men of God. Hallelujah. Now, as I said earlier on, that when you are in a state of brokenness, you are more vulnerable. You are exposed to vulnerability. It is when the Lord cuts through you, he exposes you. He exposed every aspect of you. Just like the Bible says. He says, Lord, you know me, you know my heart. You see right through me. And so God exposes every aspect of you because you are in a state of humbleness. He knows what you are capable of and what you are not capable of. In your state of brokenness is where you are most vulnerable. Anything at all can attack you. And anything at all, anyone at all can look down on you and speak ill of you. It is a state of brokenness. And so as a vessel in the house of God, you must be broken. You must be broken when you come to God. You must be broken. Now, when you are broken, now you must wait the period of you being remolded. And now most of you, most of us are in the process of being remolded. Most of us are already broken. We are in the process of being remolded into the shape and design, the vessel that God wants us to be. And that is the process you must trust. So before you come to God, you must be a broken vessel. You must let it all go. 
you must get rid of all your pride and everything that gives you pride. Hallelujah, somebody. And so when we are in the process of being remolded, it is an original intention of God to make us a vessel of honor. But now that also depends on your relationship with God and your daily walk with God. It depends on the type of vessel you end up becoming. That is why the Bible said in the house of God, there are different vessels. Some are vessels of honor and some are unto honor. Listen, and those vessels that are vessels unto honor, there are some that are made of plastic. There are some that are made of wood, some that are made of paper, some that are made of silver, gold, platinum, whatever it is, titanium. And so it all determines and depends what value of a vessel you are going to be. Hallelujah. Listen, we all cannot be of the same vessel. We all cannot have the same value because our relationship with God are not the same. And how God is dealing with us are on different basis. Hallelujah. And so you must understand that at your lower state, which represents your state of humbleness, brokenness is when you get promoted. Brokenness is when you get promoted. Now, when you are broken and you come to God, broken as you are, a broken spirit, a contrite heart, you are humble when you come to God, expect a promotion. Because there is no way the Lord is going to deal with you, looking down on you. He's going to have to raise, lift you up to see what he's dealing with. And so when the Bible says that when the Lord Jesus was passing through the street of Galilee, when he was healing the sick and those lepers that were down, he didn't just heal them and they remained there. In the state of humbleness, in the state of brokenness, he healed them, held their hand and lifted them up. He said, rise up and walk. And so in the state of your brokenness, in the state of your humbleness, when the Lord is dealing with you because you are broken, he got to lift you up and cause you to rise up. That is why there is a rising and a lift up for a broken vessel. Because when the Lord is about to remold you, he has to remold you into a design, into a shape and a vessel unto his own honor and glory. Hallelujah. Now, as time permit, we will go to the second part of this brokenness. Hallelujah. We will go to the second part of this brokenness. But we will speak more into personality. More into personality. Most of us are where we are because of friends. Most of us have come to where we are, whether good or bad, because of friends. And most of us are either broken or unbroken because of friends. Most of us are at the verge of losing what we have or getting what we have because of friends. But one thing that you must understand, I know the Bible said that a brother is born for adversity. But a friend loves at all times. Listen, not all the love of a friend is a true love. A friend may show you love based on what you are disclosing to them. And that is the type of advice. But if a friend is not able to see beyond what you are telling them, then you should be mindful of your friend. Who is your friend? Who is your friend? Who is your friend? Are you broken? Is that friend broken? Are you in the process of being broken? Or you are already broken. Has a friend broken you? Or is a friend breaking you? You must understand the process of brokenness. That there are different types of brokenness. It's either you are a broken vessel because you have been broken. Or you are a vessel in the presence of God by virtue of you being broken. Now, so when you are breaking... And when you are broken are two different things. But until you become broken, when you come to God, you don't come to God. And because when you are in the process of being break, 
then you are being break or you are breaking because of something. But in the process of you coming to God already as a broken vessel, you know that you are a vessel of a dishonor. Just as Jeremiah witnessed, he witnessed two episodes because it was a message that God wanted him to see and to deliver to the people of Israel. Now, one, as I said earlier on, that God wanted Jeremiah to witness a broken vessel in the hand of the porter. Listen, the vessel did not break itself. And so that is what I'm trying to explain, that most of us have been broken by our friends. Most of us have been broken by circumstances. Most of us have been broken by the things that we went through, and it has humbled us. Now, when you come to God, you are already a toughen, broken vessel. Ah, my God, we are going somewhere tonight that I do not want to go. But listen, as I said, I just got a glint of a revelation right now. Now, when you come to God already broken because you are broken by a circumstance, you are broken by a situation, you are broken by a friend, and now you are already a broken vessel before you came. Listen to that. You are already a hardened broken vessel. Listen, you are not going to be easy to be broken because Jeremiah did not witness an already broken vessel in the hands of the porter. Listen, Jeremiah did not break the vessel. The vessel got broken in the process of being made. And so what Jeremiah witnessed was not the product breaking the vessel before he got there and remodeled it. Jeremiah witnessed that the vessel was already made but broken in the hands of the product. And so that was what Jeremiah witnessed. It was a fresh broken vessel in the hands of the product. And that's what I'm trying to let you know that when you come to God, God got to break you. You got to be broken. When you come to God, it is not you coming to God already broken by circumstance. It is as if that when you get out of a broken relationship and you are getting into another relationship, when you are fresh in a new relationship, you are get into that relationship to get over the hurt and the pain that is a fresh one it's not what we're talking about you gotta be healed before you are able to see far and beyond and so what i'm trying to say is that when jeremiah witnessed a broken vessel it was not a vessel that got broken before being made it was not a vessel that broke itself it was a vessel now when jeremiah broke it but it was a vessel that could not spend the pressure of the process of being made and so when you understand the process and the journey that the Lord is taking you, listen, there are things that you will not venture to even look at twice because the Bible says once have been spoken and twice have I heard that all power belongs to him because when God speaks once, you hear them twice because of the resounding voice of God. But one thing you must understand that when you come to God, God got to break you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strength. God has to break you. Listen, most of you are at your workplaces. You are not comfortable at the workplace because you have not broken into the working environment. Most of us are in a relationship in marriages. We are not broken in the marriages. We are not broken in our relationship. And so the pride is there. The, the, the humbleness is not there. The things that we grew up from our family, the things that we learned when we were growing up, we still hold on to that. We are not broken. We haven't left those things aside. The reason why it is not going the way you want is because you are not broken. Because you got to be broken. You got to let go of the pride. You got to let go of the anger. You got to let go of the bitterness. You got to let go of that which is holding you back so that you can see clear. The other day I was telling you folks that the way you look at things, when you change what you're looking at, whatever you're looking at will also change because it is all perception in your mind. How you see them is how you understand but when you begin to let you understand it and your perception be interfered by that which you are looking at whatever you're looking at will now change when you say oh no this is just a book this is just a book but when you begin to see this as the word of god it will begin to make sense to you it will no more be a just book for you it will be the word of god that it is carried that is why perception and understanding is very vital in your life. Now
not just in your spiritual journey, but in your personal life as well. And so what Jeremiah witnessed was a vessel that could not stand the pressure of being made. And so he got a break and the, and the porter had to say, no, I ain't going to let you go. You are a broken vessel. This is not what I want. I got to remold you into the ship that I want. I got to remold you into the vessel that I want, a vessel of honor to me that I can sell you for a bigger price, that I can earn money from you. The fact that you are broken, I ain't going to throw you away. Listen, somebody, the Lord ain't going to throw you away because you are broken, because he's very much interested in you. He want to sell you off to the highest speed. He want to sell you off to his highest glory. He want to sell you off to his highest grace. And so he ain't going to throw you away. He going to remold you into the shape, into the vessel that he desires, that will bring honor to him, that people will look at you and say, oh my, my, look at how the Lord has turned the table around for him or her. See how the Lord has turned the things around for her. Beloved, at the sound of my voice, I pray, may the Lord minister you today. May the Lord lift you up from your married clay. May the Lord set you upon the rock. May the Lord place you onto a marble that you will never be moved by circumstances right now. May the Lord break you. Everything that you are going through, your understanding and perception, may the Lord break you right now. Your life, Lord, may the Lord break you. The way you see things, may the Lord break you. The way you hear and understand, may the Lord break you. The way you hear, the way you smell, may the Lord break you and bring you to a place where you can be broken. Because until the Lord break you, <laughs> there is no remolding. But when you have already been broken before coming to God, he got to re-break you before he remold you. Hallelujah. But when you are an already broken vessel before you come to God, if it is not the Lord that will break you or the word of God that will break you. Listen, most of us are already broken vessels, not unto God and not by the process of God breaking us. But because we let things and situations and people break us. And so we are already broken. And we are at the verge of dispersing. But it is worse if you are broken into pieces. <laughs> My God. It is worse if you are broken into pieces. But if you are just mad. If you are just broke. The Lord got to take his time. To remold that which was broken. Listen to the process. That is why you must understand and trust the process of time. You must learn to trust the process of whatever God is doing in your life. Listen, God will use ugly situations to break you. Most of us, the things that we go through, we are not pleasant with them. We may be hearing bad news all the time. But listen, it could be a process of you being broken. Because until you see the ugliness of life, the things that you are going through, you can't be broken to see the beautiful side of things. Because in the state of brokenness, it is where you are humble. It is where you are the most vulnerable. Because the Bible says it is there that the Lord is going to lift you up. Because there is a rising and there is a lift up for the lowly. Hallelujah. You got to let God break you in your marital life. You got to let God break you in your job. You got to let God break you in your career, in your, in, 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 your, in your education, in your social life, in your spiritual life. You got to let God do the breaking. Not you being broken before coming to God. You're already broken. And when you are broken, the Lord is not going to remold a broken vessel that he did not break. He got to take you just as you are. And that takes a longer time. Because he got to take you, the broken vessel, mend you just as you are, come to him, and break you afresh so that he can remold you. Hallelujah. But when you come to God and you let him break you, he break you afresh, just like in the, the, the clay in the hands of the potter, that he got to remold you. 
Listen, when the Lord remold you, many will see you and will not recognize you. The things that the Lord will begin to bring your way, people that neglected you and never saw any value in you tomorrow will see you and could not even look straight into your eyes. They will be ashamed of how your life has turned out to be. When the Lord is in the process of remolding you because he break you, listen, your life, everything is so set on place and you will not even believe how far you can go in life. You will not believe how far you can go. That you realize that everything is coming to you at ease. With ease, everything is coming to you. You do everything with ease. You understand that. You, 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 you have the easiness of everything. You don't struggle in your career. You don't struggle in your life. Everything seems to be falling in place. Your financial life, your social life, your relationship, your career, your, your education. Listen, you don't suffer for anything. This begins to fall in right place. You will experience the beauty of life. You will see that everyone that comes around you will just want to make you a better person. They want to help you to become a better person. That is when the law breaks you and in the process of remolding you. And so please just allow the law to break you. Don't let situations break you and come to God. Don't let people, friends, break you and come to God. And so next week, we're going to go hard. Who is your friend? Who caused you to be broken? Who is breaking you? Have you been broken or you are breaking? Hallelujah, somebody. And I pray that the hands of the Lord will be so mighty upon you. That the Lord will cause his face to shine upon you. The glory and the grace of the Lord will abound for you. That you will see the beauty of the Lord in everything that you do. You will experience the hand of the Lord. And you will see the finger of God perform everything in your life. And I pray that your relationship with the Lord will be tied up as never before. That the Lord will change your perception and understanding of things. That you will learn to appreciate people the more. And you appreciate every opportunity that you have in life. You will see the beautiful aspect of your life. You will dwell in the land of the living and reap the fruit of your labor. Your, 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 your words will never fall to the ground. The Lord bless you. May he keep you in the power of his blessing. May his hand over you and his countenance over you be a shield and a buckler. And above all, I pray that may the Lord cover you up and may the Lord arm you. May his goodness and mercy be upon you. Once again, may the Lord bless you. Until we meet again next week, Friday. Uh, next week, Tuesday, sorry. Uh, I, I, I forgot we stopped our Friday service a long time ago. Hallelujah. Uh, I pray the Lord bless you. And once again, you are watching live from Traveling Radio. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, you can just search us, uh, uh, like us, follow us. Anytime we come on so you can get the news feed. Hallelujah. So that your life can be blessed, even as we all embark on this journey of our daily walk with God. Even as we are in serious need of uh, solidifying our relationship with our partners and spouses, so we also want to solidify our relationship with God. So it's all about getting to know God on a more personal level, so God can deal with you on a more personal level. Hallelujah. And so may the Lord bless you once again. This is God's servant, Pastor Justice Mensah. Hallelujah. I have my own <laughs> sister on the platform. Uh, Mamre, God bless you. I owe you a call and I owe you a visitation. Uh, uh, hopefully summertime, but we will call. Well, right after here, I'm going to give you a call so we talk. Hallelujah. Uh, I hope uh, my 
brother-in-law and the kids are all doing great. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. And I also see you, my dear. Hallelujah. God bless you, uh, uh, Diana Nyanku. God bless you, my dear, for joining us today. Ohimefia, God bless you. God bless you, Ohimefia, for tuning in and for joining us today. I saw you last two weeks. God bless you once again for coming on. Uh, it's, it's always a privilege to have you. And without you, this program will not be a success. And please, if you're on Facebook, please click the share button. You can also click the, 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 the copy uh, 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 link on Facebook and place on your uh, WhatsApp status so that that can send a link to whoever likes it and see it so that we can all grow together and promote the word and the message of God. Hallelujah. And that is the only favor I need from you. You can just click the share button, just share this news feed so that whoever is not online right now who is not watching the live feed when it comes back later they can see it on your page and they can also follow may the lord bless you once again may the lord keep you in the power of his blessing may the hand of the lord be over you and your household once again this is traveling hour and you are watching live from traveling multimedia may the lord bless you and until we meet again next week tuesday peace shalom bye-bye for now